Hello, my name is Kate Round. Welcome to my museum vlog. I work for Dudley Museum Service as a tour guide and an outreach worker based here at the Red House Glasscone. In my last vlog, we had a look at the hot side of the industry, uh, where the end of the process, the blown blanks went through to the cutting and decorating shops, the cold side of the industry. Today, we'll have a look at some of the innovative ways uh, of decorating glassware, cutting, engraving, enamelling, gilding, all sorts of different ways to add value to what is a relatively inexpensive material. As fashions changed, however, so did the design of glassware to appeal to their brand market. It was also a clever, to, clever marketing tool because uh, customers aspired to collect whole sets of uh, matching glassware. But the market is very different today. But there's still place, uh, a place for matching tableware. Not just the tableware, but also unique showcase commemorative and exhibition pieces such as Cameo. So come with me, let's go and have a look. Stuart Crystal, English handmade glass of rare beauty. That was their main product, tableware, including glassware, water sets, tumblers. Handmade glasses much, must match to make sets. And it took skilled glassmakers seven years of apprenticeship to competently make one glass and 10 years to make two the same. In the Schrauer, the blown blanks were inspected for quality and packed for the decorating shops. Before they went, the glasses were marked for their height and scribed on a jig, and the surplus glass or moils was cracked off. This was returned to the melter's cullet. The top was then ground level and a bevel put on the glass. This process was later automated. Another jig was used to mark the grid line outline for the master pattern to guide the cutters. The grid was painted on using red lead and turpentine. Over in the cutting shop we see a long workshop with an overhead central drive shaft, originally steam driven and holding wheels of various sizes to run the drive belts. The wheel sizes regulate the speed of the belt, which transmits the drive to the spindles on the cutter's wheels. The frame is a wooden or iron trough, raised on legs with two upright pillars on either side, with bearings to fix the spindles into, easy to change or replace. Cutting was then done in two stages, the rough cut and the smooth. The cutter looked through the glass to contact the wheel. Rough cutting was on a carborundum wheel lubricated with water. A smoother used a smooth stone wheel with water. The piece was then acid polished, an intensely corrosive mix of sulfuric hydrofluoric acid. This gave the glass a luster and a brilliance, with the cuts refracting and dispersing the light to give rainbow colours like a prism. Adding ammonia to the acid mix leaves a frosted or semi-bright appearance. This mix was called white acid. Engraving is the oldest form of glass decoration, originally using a treadle-driven workbench and achieved using a copper wheel fitted into a mandrel and revolving horizontally about 12 inches above the workbench. The copper wheels are lubricated with emery in oil. Engravers can have as many as 100 wheels varying in size from a pinhead to four inches in diameter to produce intricate, delicate designs. And this was rarely polished, but left as a matte pattern. Acid etching was used to create repetitive patterns. A pantograph machine was used to cut through a wax coating. The piece was then acid dipped to etch the glass before the remaining wax was removed to leave the repetitive pattern with a bright surface. This repetitive pattern was often used on the borders to glassware. Enamelling was one of Stuart's cheap and cheerful most striking innovations between the war. They produced novelty cocktail sets decorated with spiders, devils and lucky symbols. 
they used finely ground glass powder applied to the cold glass and refired to fuse the glass powder to form a permanent pattern. Cameo is glass sculpture, a labour intensive art form that made the Portland vase famous in the history of Stourbridge glass. Cameo was successfully marketed as medallion cameo on scent bottles, decanters and dressing table sets. It was an unusual panel style of cameo set against a cut crystal background. Sandblasting was an innovative technique to produce cameo. It left a fine frosted pattern on the glass. Tableware was the mainstay of Stuart's production and Beaconsfield pattern first made in 1907 continued until the factory closed in 2001. Stewart's was a major supplier to shipping lines including the Titanic, flagship of the White Star Line, and with over 22,000 pieces made for Cunard's Queen Mary in 1930. The fine quality finished products left the factory branded and securely packed in the distinctive Stewart colours. Next time we'll have a look at the strange shift patterns worked by the glassmakers and the tools that haven't changed since Roman times. See you next time.